Kit Rely using a protractor. And with your ruler, all I would like you to do using a ruler is to draw some type of an angle, but I want you to draw it very, very specifically. What I'd like you to do is to draw a straight line at an angle like this. Where's my straight line thingy? Uh, I don't know, something like that. And then draw another straight line that intersects it, kind of, I don't know, like that. Yours will be different from mine. And this is where Boston, it's tricky for me to explain how to do this on my tablet. I tried to find a virtual protractor. I can't find one for free and I don't want to pay 10 bucks and find out that it sucks. So I'll look around in the summer. But for now, what I would like you to do once you've drawn kind of sort of vaguely an X, I want you to see if you can measure accurately that angle right there using a protractor. Now, how are you going to do that using that small little thing? Well, let me pause the video recording and I'll explain to you. Do me a favor then. Can you open your books up, please, to it's lesson one from the next unit, sort of. It's page 105. Page 105. Page 105. And what we're going to do, we've gone from talking about inductive reasoning, making conclusions, and deductive reasoning, trying to prove things. And we're going to start to do it with shapes. You may have done some of this last year, or in grade 9, or in grade 8. It really depends on what your teacher emphasized or not. Uh, Sydney, I'm going to teach it from scratch. So if you remember all this, don't be insulted. It's, I'm assuming you've all forgotten it. So says, in this unit, we will use inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning to determine relationships between pairs of angles formed by what are called transversals and parallel lines. Oh, heck. Let's jump down here. First of all, some definitions. Can you all underline or highlight the word acute angle? I'm going to ask you to know that word. I'm going to use that word. An acute angle is an angle between 0 and 90 degrees an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. How big is 90 degrees? This big. A right angle. How big is 0? This big. So anything in here? Oh, it's acute. No? OK. A right angle. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. And we have a symbol that shows you that it's exactly 90 degrees. Adam, if you draw a little square or a half square like that, that's the symbol for, even if it doesn't look it because Mr. Duick is drawing it by freehand and it sucks, that's meant to be a right angle. Then we have an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle, Shay, is an angle bigger than 90, less than 180. My mom says I'm obtuse. No, that means something different. This is the angle we're talking about here. This is an obtuse angle. A straight angle is exactly what it sounds like, an angle that forms a 180 degree line. You okay there, Courtney? You're really fascinated by that little toy, I can tell. You good? Okay. What's a reflex angle? A reflex angle is between 180 and less than 360, but bigger than 180 and less than 360. What's the reflex angle in this picture here? That one. That's called a reflex angle. Bigger than 180 degrees because it's more than a straight line. And the complete rotation is 360 degrees. How many degrees are there in a circle? 360 degrees. You are going to need to know these terms, and specifically, you are going to need to know, Jordan, that 360 degrees is a circle. Most basketball players will have no trouble with that because you call a slam dunk a 360. You have that one memorized. Um, and you are going to need to know that a straight line is 180 degrees. 
So far, so good? All right. A says, in each case, use a protractor to measure the indicated angles and complete the work. So with your protractor right now, can you find how big angle X is and round off to the nearest 5 or 10 degrees? Because I think it's supposed to be a fairly even number, I think. And I'm going to grab a protractor. Here. Assuming that my screen doesn't distort things. What are you getting for angle X? How big? I, yeah, I'm getting on my screen, it's like 137 in a chunk, but that could be because my screen is distorting things. Uh, let's call it 140 degrees. How big is angle Y? Sorry? Did you measure it or did you use inductive reasoning to figure it out? Oh, you measured it and it was kind of obvious? What do angle X and angle Y add to? 180 degrees. In fact, that's the punchline, Jordan, that I want to get to. Without measuring angle A and angle B, can you look at them and can you tell me what they have to add to? Pardon me? Why? Um, not a good answer. I mean, you're, you're correct. That's the inductive reasoning part, but now we also want to bring some kind of a deductive proof to it. What do they form together when you add them together? What is their base form together? I'll give you a hint. Straight angle. Every straight line is 180 degrees. So can you tell me, without measuring angle P, Q, and R, what do angle P, Q, and R add to? 180 degrees. Angles on one side of a straight line add up to 180 degrees. And what we're going to do now is we're going to give that rule a name. We're going to say from now on, instead of you having to say, those are angles that form a straight line together, we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it supplementary. If you say supplementary, I know you're telling me these two angles add to 180. Each one is the supplement of the other. X is the supplement of Y. A is the supplement of B. P is the supplement of Q and R. Q is the supplement of P and R. R is the supplement of P and Q. Yes? Turn, turn the page. How big does angle A have to be? Angle A, I don't think, can possibly be 180 degrees because 180 degrees is a straight line, and I think angle A looks to me about like that. Sorry? I think you're right. 25, what would you do? Okay, 180 minus 155. I agree. How big does angle B have to be, and if you use a calculator, go ahead, or if you can do the math in your head, that's fine too. How big must angle B be? 61, is he correct? Yes? Okay. Now we're going to look at a very special shape, this X shape, the one that I had you draw at the beginning of class, and we're going to see if we can add a new rule to our... So right now we have a rule called century. We're going to see if we can add a new rule. We're going to see if we can do some inductive reasoning and some deductive reasoning. So they gave me 80 degrees. How big is angle C? Sorry, you're telling me that angle C is exactly the same size as that one there? I don't think they look the same to me. This one looks a lot fatter. In fact, this one looks bigger than 90. This one looks smaller than 90. Marcus, 100? How come? What's the fancy term that we gave it? it? Begins the letter S and rhymes with supplementary. Supplementary, very good. You okay with that? 
How big is angle E? Eighty, convince me. Okay, there's another straight line right here. How big is angle D? How big is angle D? Hundred. Hundred. Okay. Here's the pattern we want to notice here today. Matt, how big is this angle here? How big is this angle here? Oh. Um, Matt, how big is this angle here? How big is this angle here? We're going to give that pattern, when you have an X and you know that this angle and this angle are the same size, and this angle and this angle are the same size, rather than prove this four-step little proof anymore, this three-step little proof anymore, we're going to give that a name. First of all, we're going to erase the highlighter. If we have opposite angles at a vertex, we call them vertically opposite angles. If you have two straight lines that make an X shape, First of all, the point where they cross right there is called the vertex. Can you tell me two angles that have to be the same size in this particular picture? S and R have to be the same size. I don't know what they are, but they got to be the same. And in fact, if I knew one of them, I could find the other three. Okay. Here's an example with numbers. Here's a generic example. Example A says, use a protractor to measure each of the following angles. I disagree. I'd like you all just to measure angle A, and we're going to stop. We're going to write that down, and then we're going to see if we can reason our way to what the rest are. So can you measure angle A, this one right there, please, with your protractors? What do you get? I should do this too, Mr. Duke. Are you getting about 100 degrees? I think it's supposed to be 100. 100? Sorry? 110? Is it, is it 110 on your guys's? OK, so I can't measure the ones on my screen then, because my tablet distorts everything. That's going to be a little frustrating. And I dropped this. There we go. 110 degrees. Now that I know that, how big does angle B have to be? 110, we call that vertically opposite. How big does angle C have to be? 70, supplementary to angle A or angle B. How big does angle D have to be? Is that all right, Sierra? Thumbs up. Have you guys done this before or not? Is this new or is this review? Oh, drooling. OK, fine. So it says complete the following. Opposite, we're going to skip this one. Opposite angles at a vertex are equal. And in fact, we call these vertically opposite angles. Note, it says, the word vertically refers to the vertex and has nothing to do with being vertical, which is true. Turn the page. So a straight line forms 180 degrees. How many degrees are there in a circle? 360. So 
If I start here and go all the way around, don't write that down, I'll just do that. How many degrees must I have just gone through? 360 degrees? Okay. With your protractor, measure angle E, please. How big do you get for angle E? Taylor, what'd you get? It's got to be bigger than 90 by eyeballing. Sorry? I heard 100 115. Anybody else? No, yes? 110? 110? The consensus seems to be that angle E is 110. How big is angle F that looks a bit bigger than, looks like about 110 or 120 or something like that. How big is angle F that's this angle right here? I can't hear, I'm sorry. 110 again? Okay. How big should angle G be? Can you figure it out without actually measuring it, and then we'll measure it to confirm it? Alex, what did I say all of these have to add to? It's got to be 360. So I think it's going to be 360 minus 110 minus 110. I think, in theory, it should be really close to 140 degrees. Is it? We're going to give that a name as well. I'm not going to do the second one. I think I've got the idea. We call this here angles around a point. And angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. So example two says calculate the angles marked with letters. How big is angle A? How can you figure out how big angle A is, Joe? Any guesses? And subtract from? Yep, go. Does Joe have his calculator here? He does! Oh, I can like you again. Sydney's getting hers out now. Ah, people are getting on the bandwagon here. Be part of the crowd. Update your Facebook status. I have my calculator. Sam, what'd you get? 100? Sam says 100. Is she right? Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. Isn't that a letter X? Shouldn't that be 71? And the answer is no. How come? The X has to be perfect for you to use that vertically opposite rule. You notice that this here isn't a continuation of this line here. So the X rule, the vertically opposite rule, it has to be, Sydney, a proper X like that. It can't be an X like that, which you could say, well, that's sort of an X, Mr. No, not really. Is that okay? All right. Example two. The second one. Let's assume, Shay, that they want us to find B first. So the question I'm going to ask myself is, how can I find B? How big is B? Why is, oh, here I do have a perfect X, which means that this angle and this angle will be the same size. Oh, 
forgot to turn that off, Mr. Duke. Now that I know angle B, how big is angle C? Joe, how can I find angle C now that I know angle B? What have I just drawn? How many degrees? 360. Do you know that guy? Yeah. Do you know that guy? Do you know that guy? Can you just figure out that guy? So how can you figure out the last one? Same thing as you did over here, isn't it? Minus 360. Good. Go to it. It's going to be 360 minus... 120 minus 60 minus 55 minus 60. 65? Yes? Has to be. So let's rehash. So far, Emily, we have supplementary angles at a point vertically opposite. We're going to add a couple of more little rules, little tricks, little shortcuts that we can use. It says, investigating the sum of angles in a triangle. And we're, I'm going to do this one up at the front here really quickly because I don't have enough pairs of scissors to go around. Continue. It says, based on this investigation, angles in a triangle. Matt, what did you say they add up to? 180 degrees. Every triangle adds to 180. We've got a couple of more little tricks we can use here. It says, recall the following triangle property. You may or may not recall this. In an isosceles triangle, I won't make you spell it correctly. I will make you say it correctly. In an isosceles triangle, you have two equal sides and two equal angles. Um, here's how we show this. It says verify this property by measuring the sides. We're not going to. Instead, we're going to signify that the sides are the same by using hash marks. Look up. Right now, those two sides have different lengths, even though they look the same. Joe, you know how the, I know that those two sides have different lengths, even though they look at the same? How many hash marks does this side have on it? This side. How many does this have? As soon as I do that, what I'm telling you is those are both the same length, okay? Or I can also say that the angles are the same. I could do that by going – we use little hash marks, little symbols. It's an easy way, especially if you're trying to draw these shay, and they're tricky to draw accurately, and you're saying they don't quite look the same. Use the hash marks, and I will assume that they are the same. This is an isosceles triangle. What this means is these two angles are the same size. How does that help? Draw yourself freehand a little isosceles triangle right here. That looks an awful lot like mine. And I'm going to call this triangle J-O-E. Draw this. It means you got to pick up your pencil and actually draw this now. Is this an isosceles triangle? Not yet. Let's make it an isosceles triangle, Alex, by doing that. Okay? And I'm going to tell you one more thing. I'm going to tell you that this angle right here is 28 degrees. How big is angle... J O E and how big is angle J E O? Say what? Courtney, here's how you label angles. You often will use three letters and J O E means J O E, it's this angle right here. You go in the order that it's written, where the middle letter is where the vertex is. J-E-O, J-E-O means that angle right there. 
Okay. What shape is this, Jeremiah? What does every triangle add to? Okay, so I know that this plus this plus this equals 180. But because it's isosceles, I know one more thing. So how can I use that to figure out how big each one of them is? Yeah, Marcus. 180, take away my 28. I like where you're going so far. Let's do that on my cat. 180, take away 28. Uh-huh. Uh, let's try that again. 180, take away 28. Uh-huh. Oh, I got 152 degrees left for both angles, but if they're both the same, they're each 76. Is that what you're saying? Boston, does that make sense? That, that very handy trick that I just showed you right there. We're going to use that an awful lot. If you know it's an isosceles triangle, very handy because you know two of the angles are the same. You can find them by dividing by two. Joe, you okay on Joe? Or Geo? This one here, I think we can figure out. This last one here, I think we can figure out. It says exterior sides of a triangle. What it's really saying is this angle and this angle. Hey, what do these two form together? What do these two form together? Taylor, straight line. In fact, what was the fancy word? Begins with the letter S, rhymes with supplementary? Supplementary. So if I tell you that angle C equals 80 degrees, how big must angle X be? Better. Got to be 100. Got to be 100. Why? Supplementary. So they want us to walk through that bender, but I think I think we see it okay. And instead, we're going to turn the page to page 109. So this is what we're going to spend some time doing here for the next few days. We're going to be using deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, conjectures, conclusions, for shapes. I like this. It's a nice change from, here's an equation, graph it. How big does angle X have to be? Hmm. What's angle X sitting in? What shape? Matt, triangle. And what did we say every triangle adds to? So, 180 minus 83 minus 65 got to be 32. Yes? Okay. Here we have angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D. By the way, have you clued in what the, abbrevi uh, the abbreviation for the word angle is? It's a little slanty L, right? Sam, how big is angle A? How can we figure out how big angle A is? Well, I'll give you a hint. They only gave me two angles. They gave me a 29 and they gave me a 36. So I'm going to use one of those guys. So I'm now asking myself, is angle A forming an X vertically opposite with any of them? Is it supplementary to any of them? Is it part of a triangle? I'm running through the little checklist of things that I have here. Can you see it? How big does angle A have to be? Nothing. You're awake now. Joel's breathing again. Mr. A is looking at me like I'm a freak. Got to keep him on their toes. Shay, any thoughts? How big? Okay, let's walk through this. Do you know where angle A is? Point to it. Yes? Yeah? 
First thing I want to notice then is it's made up of this line right here. Is that a straight line going to the next angle? Do I know the next angle? Well, how big? How big must these two guys be together? What's every single straight line? So do the math. Folks, get, come on, get your calculators out if you need to. Do the math. No laziness here. Shay, what'd you get? I agree with you, Shay. That was so much fun. We're going to keep going. So that beverage now is surging through you. You're getting a little caffeine sugar rush. Excellent. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? So 151, I agree with you. Angle B. Any suggestions here, Shay, how I can figure out how big angle B is? Ah, on the other side, same thing. Sure. So what will I type into my calculator or do in my head? 180 what? So 180 minus 30 is 150 minus 6. How big? I agree with you, 144 degrees, mister. What's that? This is so much fun. You want to keep going? How can I say no to you, Shay? Absolutely. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, angle C. Angle C. Hmm. What shape is angle C in, Shay? How big is this angle? How big is this angle right here? Ah, because the one next to it is 90, and those two form a straight line, supplementary. What does every triangle add to? Good. Go to it. Sixty-one? No, yes. I'm doing the math in my head. I could be wrong. What's that? You want to finish this one off and get that rosy glow of success? Absolutely, Shay. Let's do that. Let's do that. On your own, can you tell me how big angle D has to be? Yeah, you. Fifty-four, is he right? He is. Sit up a little straighter, get a little smile. That's called success. It feels feels good, doesn't it? I've never felt that before. Yeah, well, there you go. First time. Ready, Shania? Let's try this next one here. I tend to go alphabetically because I assume whoever created this went alphabetically and probably I'll use the first one to find the next one, to find the next one. So if I jump on the last letter of the alphabet, I might be stuck. So they gave me, uh, I think I'm going to start out with angle P because P comes first in the alphabet. I'll write over here angle P equals, angle Q equals, angle R equals, angle S equals. Is there an angle T? Yes, there is. Shania, can you tell me how big angle P has to be? I agree with you. Supplementary. Or Shay, you know what you can call supplementary for short? Sup. No? Okay. Keep going, Shania. Angle Q. Is it 69 degrees? Yes, no? Yes, forms a straight line right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going, angle R. Hmm. Oh, I bet you will use angle Q and angle P to find angle R. That's why I said I go alphabetically all the time. Uh, it's gonna be 180 minus, minus, did you say 59, 59 degrees, is that right? Five, nine? How'd you get that, Shania? Why from 180? Because this shape together forms a triangle. Perfect. Keep going. Angle S. I totally agree. 121. Oh, finish this off. You've done so well. And I'll even give you a candy because I like you better than Shay. 
What was that? How could I not? Yeah. Um, 109? How'd you get? Oh, yeah. And by the way, again, Shay, notice this is not vertically opposite x's because it's a crooked x. We can't use our these two are the same and those two are the same. Otherwise, that would have made this question really fall apart really, really quick. So, sorry, what did you say it was? 100 and what? 109? I agree. Boston, what do these two hash marks mean? That these two sides are? Which means that these two angles are? Ready? Boston, what do these two hash marks mean? That these two sides are? Which means that these two angles are? Ah, see how I feel the rhythm? It's an isosceles triangle means two sides and two angles the same, which means I can tell you angle D already, Boston. What's angle D? I totally agree with you. And then they want me to find angle E and angle F. Let's keep going, Boston, my friend. Angle E. Or 180 minus 34 times 2, or more specifically, as a number, as an answer. <gasps> 100, 112? Yeah. Oh, how big is angle F? I don't know. You know what? First, by the way, before Marcus points this out to you, what we're doing is called geometry. I sucked at it, I'm, I'm still terrible at it. It was the one thing in math that I'm very, very bad at. And so I taught myself a mental checklist where to look to try and find the answer. One of the first places I look is at the angle that we just found. What angle did we just find? Angle what? E. Do angle E and angle F form anything together? I heard someone murmur it over here. Straight line. And what's every straight line? Now I can. But that's what I would have done with. I would. So 180 minus 112 is, I think, 68. Okay. Is that okay? I'm going to add one more term for you. By the way, it says summary. We have opposite angles on a line add up to a point, add up to 180. We called that supplementary. Let's write down the word. Supplementary. Opposite angles at a vertex are equal, vertically opposite angles. That was this one. How do I remember that one? Can you all look up for a second? What letter is that right there? I agree with you, X. If I cover it up, what letter is that top hash form? V for vertically opposite angles. If you're looking for a dumb way to remember it, works for me. Uh, angles around a point add up to 360. Angles in a triangle add to 180. It says the exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the interior opposite angles. Ah. By the way, it is true. I don't know if you noticed, Boston, but 34 plus 34 is 68. I don't know if you noticed, but that plus that gives you that. I've never really used that one as a shortcut because almost always I can find this guy and then find that guy as a hopscotcher. But we are going to add a sixth one, a sixth term. Angles that add to 90 degrees are called so angles that add to 180 degrees are called supplementary. So does anybody know what we call angles that add to 90 degrees? Complementary. Complementary. What's your homework? Two things for you to work on. First of all, in the workbook, number one, number two, number four, 
We skipped three. Five is good. Six is good. Seven and eight. Sure, nine is good too, I think. And then I have for you a great big package of stuff that we're slowly going to work through. I'm going to tell you which questions you're capable of doing right now. It doesn't mean these are all due next class, but you want to start them if you finish them. And I'll give that to you in just one second here. Right click, pause. So put your name on this big, great big geometry package number one. And, uh, okay, Mr. Duick, apparently you haven't printed this up yet. Okay, really quickly, hang on, bear with me. Reasoning with angles, reasoning with angles, package number one. Uh, right now, I think you folks can do or are capable of doing this first page, which is called S2. and S3 and S4. Now, am I saying all of that is due next class? No, but you're going to find when you get pretty good at these, you can probably get all the homework done, including this far, done in class. Okay? There's a couple of words on here that you might not know. Congruent means same size, but vertically opposite, acute, obtuse, all stuff, and I have an answer key. I'll put this answer key both online, but I'll throw it up here every so often so you can double check your answers, because this one, the answers are not attached. Does that make sense, Alex? We're good? If I'm withdrawing in pictures, if you can hand in the protractor and the rulers, preferably putting them back in the little plastic thingy, that would be wonderful, that would be great. And you have the remainder of class to work on this.